page 14, chapter 3, Jericho. Though God has given us great visions and great promises concerning our future, a land flowing with milk and honey in our future, Satan and his cohorts will not hand it over to us easily. They have been occupying our promised land for ages. They do not want to be evicted from there. They will not go down without a fight. When we call it Jericho, we must expect some resistance and opposition of the enemy. We arm ourselves for spiritual warfare. 3a. Expect spiritual warfare. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Ephesians 6 verse 12 The enemy might come through a human being. We are not fighting that person but the demonic agents in him or her. So we still love the person, but we hate his or her actions and deeds, which are contrary to the word of God. Since we have established that it is a spiritual warfare, we must not approach it in the flesh, but in the spirit. God, who is spirit, knows the spirit realm better than any of us. Having his spirit in us and with us gives us the freedom or liberty to operate in the spirit realm. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 17 Long before we were born, the Lord had defeated Satan and his cohorts, cast them out of heaven. If there is someone who knows how to defeat Satan, it is the Lord of hosts. David, a man of war, knew it. Hence, before going to any battle, he inquired of the Lord of hosts. Even if he had defeated that adversary in the past, he still inquired of the Lord. 1 Samuel 23 verse 2 3b. God's battle plans can be foolishness to a carnal mind. Jericho means fragrant or sweet smell. In Joshua 6, when they asked for divine instructions concerning the battle against the city, God told them to march around it for seven days, once every day and on the seventh day seven times, and then blow the horns and shout for victory. For the Lord has given them the city and the mighty men in it. To win the Lord's battle, we need to follow his instructions. Whatever he tells us to do, we do it. It may sound stupid or foolish, but he knows better. The battle is not ours, but the Lord's. Joshua could recall the instruction that God gave to Moses before the Red Sea. Stand still and see the salvation that I, the Lord, will perform on your behalf. Exodus 14 verse 13 It sounded stupid at that time, but Moses obeyed. The Egyptians were coming after them to kill them, but they stood still, and the Lord fought for them. Here God is asking them to praise him, but it is more of worship than praise. Everything that has breath praises the Lord. Psalm 150 verse 6 Even the rivers clap their hands. Psalm 98 verse 8 We praise or give thanks to God when He has been good to us for what He does for us. All the creation of God gives Him thanks for creating them. If mankind does not want to praise him or give him thanks for what he has done, even the stones will cry out in praise to him. Luke 19 verse 40 We give him thanks when he has provided for us and delivered us, and so on. 3c. Worship God for who he is. Worship is deeper than thanksgiving. We worship God for who he is, his attributes, his person. This is the kind of praise God is seeking. Jesus told us in John 4 verse 23, The hour is coming and now is, when true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. Many times we approach God with our lips and sacrifices, but our heart is far from God. Matthew 15 verse 8, Isaiah 29 verse 13. God wants us to know who He is, for if we know the God whom we serve, we have the truth and the truth will make us free. 
John 8 verse 32 Many times we have no reason to worship God, to thank Him, to sing, for when we look around us we are in a deep mess and trouble. In the physical we have no reason to be singing or praising God or thanking Him. That is why we need to step into another realm. We step into the spiritual realm and worship God. We know the truth about our God. We know who He is. For the things we see are temporal or subject to change, but the things we do not see, they are the ones which will be established. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 18 We are calling the things we do not see or do not exist in the physical as though they did. Romans 4 verse 17 By so doing we exalt God above our predicament and mess. We elevate Him far above those walls of Jericho, the walls of our lives. The walls the enemy has built up to confine our progress, to prevent us from conquering what is rightfully ours. All these walls will fall down flat. Our God is higher than any wall or fortress man can ever build up. There is no mountain that is so high that our God cannot move. In fact, God says, Who are you, O great mountain before my people? You shall become a plain. I will level you off. Zechariah 4 verse 7 There is no mountain in our life so high that God cannot level it off, like he caused the walls of Jericho to fall down flat. 3D. Learn from the saints of old. Paul and Silas, when in prison as the Bible narrates in Acts 16, 25-26, but at midnight Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loosed. They were in prison, but the prison was not in them. They saw God high and lifted up above their prison bars. They worshipped him for who he is, a deliverer, and he freed them. Not only God freed them, but also all the other prisoners. Father Abraham worshipped God too when he went to offer up Isaac as a sacrifice to the Lord. Genesis 22 verse 5 And Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship and we will come back to you. He believed in his heart that after he had obeyed God and offered up Isaac, God was able to raise him even from the dead. In his heart he had already received Isaac from the dead. He saw God high and lifted up above death. He knew the truth about his God, that he is the resurrection and the life. In the eyes of God, Abraham met the criteria of the true worshipper. He was in the spirit because he was not moved by his senses, and he knew the truth about God. After all, has Jesus not said? He was the resurrection and the life in John 11. Worship elevates God above our situations. We deem God able to deliver us to bring back to life everything that ever died in our life. God is bigger than our problems. 3. E. Rejoice in the Lord Joseph, even in the prison of Pharaoh, was still smiling and encouraging other prisoners, interpreting their dreams, edifying and building other prisoners up. Genesis 40. He was in prison, but prison was not in him. There is a place in God where we no longer walk in the flesh, but in the spirit. Even when we are low and in the bottom of a pit or dungeon, we are still rejoicing and higher than other folk. Paul, being a prisoner in Rome, under house arrest, was the one edifying those who were outside, telling him in Philippians 4 verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, Rejoice! The walls are still standing, the mountain is still before us, and we are still in Pharaoh's or Roman's prison or under house arrest, but we are worshipping God. We know our God is more than able to deliver us. In fact, He will deliver us. Our dreams will come to pass. God is not a man that He should lie to us. We can rest assured that victory is ours. We have already overcome all our adversaries and foes, before even the battle starts, for greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. 
1 John 4 verse 4. 3F. Fear not, the Lord is with you. The Lord has assigned more angelic hosts to help us than demonic hosts which are with our enemies. We outnumber them. There is no need to fear. 2 Kings 6 verse 16 If only we trust God. He will not just fight this battle of Jericho for us, but he'll fight the entire war to conquer our promised land. 1 Chronicles 5 verse 22 Oh, how great is our God, Yahweh, the man of war, Exodus 15, verse 3. He will give us the victory and always lead us in triumph in Christ, and then through us diffuse the fragrance of his knowledge in every place, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 57, and 2 Corinthians 2, verse 14. 3G. The battles we win advertise God. Now we understand why Jericho means fragrant. The Lord, by causing us to triumph over our enemy in battle, is making himself known among the Gentiles as the great God, the only true God. Besides him there is no other. He is diffusing the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. When nations ask whom do Israel serve, they will answer the Lord, the man of war, for no other God of the Gentiles has been able to destroy the walls of Jericho. God is advertising himself through our victories and triumphs. When they ask who the God of Joseph is, that causes a man to come out of a prison and become overnight the prime minister of the most powerful kingdom on earth. They will answer Yahweh, the God who causes dreams to come to pass. Men may call you a dreamer like they did Joseph, but the God whom we serve will bring it to pass. The victories and the triumphs we have in our lives, they are not about us. They are to diffuse the fragrance of our God, because once Jericho was conquered, the message was sent to all the other nations in the land of Canaan. A people whose God parted the Red Sea, parted the Jordan, and now has caused the unconquerable walls in the city of Jericho to fall are coming. The sweet smell or fragrance of the victory over the city of Jericho became a strong smell or fragrance in the nostrils of our enemies round about. Their hearts were melting within them. They said to one another, If Jericho has fallen, what about our walls and city walls? They are not as secure as Jericho was. All our enemies will be our footstool. We will crush them under our foot. And the land belongs to us. Psalm 110 verse 1 3. H. Our enemy has been poking God in the eye. He that touches us touches the apple of God's eye or the pupil of God. Zechariah 2 verse 8 Our God is overprotective when it comes to his people. As a hen hides her chicks under the shadow of her wings, so does our God do likewise. He keeps us as the apple of his eye or his pupil. He does not want anybody to come and poke him in the eye. Psalm 17 verse 8 he that comes against us, taunts us or defies us, is coming against the Lord and taunting or defying the Lord. 1 Samuel 17 verse 26 It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of our living God. Our enemies are in deep trouble. Hebrews 10 verse 31 He told them, Touch not my anointed, and do my prophets no harm. But they ignored that warning. Psalm 105 verse 15 By so doing, they have been poking God and the pupil. God will deal with all our enemies. Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let his people go? Exodus 5 verse 2 He thought he was defying us. What a fool! He was defying God and by enslaving us he was touching God's anointed ones and harming them thus poking God in the eye. He soon discovered that it is a fearful thing to fall into the hand of our God, for God destroyed his kingdom and we plundered their wealth. So shall the fate of all our enemies be, for our God is the same yesterday, today and forever. 3. I. Do not be content with the victory of Jericho. 
Let us not be content or satisfied with the victory of Jericho. God has 30 more cities for us to conquer in the promised land. This is just the beginning. We have just warmed up and stretched our spiritual muscles. He wants to give us rest on every side. Many times when we have a victory, we think we have made it. What else can God possibly give us? And we build a monument at Jericho. We even become part of the monument in our immobility. For we pitch our tent at Jericho forever, always rehearsing God's past victories, talking about the good old days. Sometimes God needs to shake us again to get us to move. Like he told the children of Israel in Joshua 18.3, How long will you neglect to go and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers has given you? Just like these Israelites, no one wants to keep fighting or keep moving from one place to the other. God had a promised land for each tribe, and as far as God was concerned, it was already theirs from the day he said it. They were quarreling that the inheritance was not enough, that they needed a share of it. God said, no, move to your own allotted land. Sometimes a person has a ministry and people in the church want to do what that person is doing. They complain that no one is giving them a platform for their ministry. The real question is, has God allotted that ministry to them, or should that person share it with that brother or that sister? God may have an allotted ministry or promised land for them, and they are just being lazy to go and possess it. The truth is, we all want to stay at Jericho. We give the excuse that we participated in the victory of Jericho. Yes, no one denies it. But God is still saying that though we helped, He has allotted that promised land to that specific person. Now let us rise up, for surely the Lord has an allotted promised land for us too. We must board the train again and go to our next destination. The land is already ours, but God has great things in mind for us. To be continued.